Morning. Good morning. Uh, I wonder if you had an update on Dylan Holloway. Yeah, Dylan's day-to-day -day with an upper body uh, injury right now, day-to-day. Uh, are you, you got a slate here of pretty tough opponents coming up. Uh, sometimes you look at it and you go, man, these are tough games to win. At this point and where your team's at, is this perhaps exactly what you need? Could be. Um, you know, me, Mark, my focus is on the Carolina Hurricanes. I've watched their, their start to their year. They come as advertised. Um, hard working group. Um, Decor has been excellent. Goaltending's been excellent. They put a lot of pucks on net. Going to have our work cut out for us with one of the league's elite teams here tonight. Jay, you mentioned the defensive core uh, being very good for Carolina. When you're playing against a defensive group like they have, do you kind of focus on anything different in regards to your forwards, maybe, or you know, highlighting anything in particular heading into this game? I, I think you just have an understanding of what um, you know, team tactics obviously change with whoever the opponent you're you're going up against. But uh, they got some special special individuals there, and you pay attention to what individual characteristics are as well. And as I said, we uh, we got one of the game's elite teams coming into our building tonight. I'm confident that we're going to be ready for. Them. Jay, um, you pulled Jack after 10 minutes the last game, but the team in front of him wasn't very good. It was obvious that. Coming in here tonight, your key's coming back in, but you expect the guys to take that personally almost in front of them and say, hey, we weren't in front of this, we weren't very good in front of this guy last game. We have to be a lot better in front of him this game. Yeah, I, I, I think so. I, Jack is a very endearing teammate, and uh, I think I've said this before, I think uh, the team plays hard for Jack, and we should expect a good response, not only from him personally, but from the team. And how, what can you take out of that third period? How do you build from that third period? 23 shots, usually you score more than one goal when you get 23 shots a period. How do you build on that and take it into the first period of this game? Yeah, as we talked about the other day, I think um, we haven't played a full 60 minutes yet, uh, not to our capability. We've had good spurts, good periods of play. Uh, that third period's one of them. Um, I think when you take a little bit of a macro view on those three games. You realize that we've played it in essentially three one-goal hockey games. Um, you look for patterns, um, and you try and find areas that can improve. And certainly, um, you know, we're not sitting where we'd like to be, uh, but there, there's been a lot of real good teachable moments there, and we're, we're going to need to be better, as I said, against one of the, the league's best teams here tonight. Jay, with the injury to Dylan in the game, you moved Nugent Hopkins up with Dry Settlehine, and they generated a lot. Obviously, you got the one goal. What, what do you like about that trio, and are, do you look to want to keep them together to start tonight? Yeah, we'll see. I think uh, I think it's important to be flexible. Um, uh, but yeah, they were good in the third period there, obviously. And uh, I think you also look at what's coming in and the way the other team lines up and what their strengths might be. And you're trying to, to build your lines ar around uh, how you're going to handle what the other team has to offer as well. You had talked about, and, and you, you wanted to see Fogel play RV and McLeod. You kind of like the potential of what that line brings. What is it that intrigues you about them as a trio? What do you think they can be successful? Yeah, they played together last year in the playoffs. And I thought uh, all three of them are big men. Uh, all three skate well. Um, and I think each one of them brings different elements. Uh, Pugliarvi is obviously a big body that breaks up a lot of plays on the forecheck. Ryan is such a smooth skater through the middle of the rink and has good hands. And then obviously um, he goes to hard areas when he's having success. Yeah, I think you find him in hard areas, and that's what we're going to need uh, from him and, and continue to make hard plays. Um, you know, along the wall, around the blue paint, those type of things. Morning, Jay. Hey, good morning. Um, you talked about patterns. What patterns do you need to see more of for the entire entirety of the game that you haven't really seen in the first three? You want me to paint that out for you? Is that what <laughs> you want me to? <laughs> um, you know what? I, I just think uh, there's the obvious pattern of in the first two games, we didn't start the way we wanted we thought uh, in game three, we started well, and uh, we did some good things. We found ourselves down, but we responded right away um, and had numerous chances to take the lead in that period. I think for us, you know, um, for us to settle into a rhythm 
and get to where we want to get to. Um, you know, I think uh, getting out in front of the game is an important uh, aspect of what we're looking to do. But we also realize that, you know, the other team gets a say in things sometimes as well. And when they do, it's about, you know, keeping your hand on the rudder and giving yourself a chance to get back into the game. Um, you know, there's areas of our puck management game that I think can improve. Um, but in the end, I'll go back to it. We've been in essentially three one-goal hockey games. And uh, we think there's um, areas that we can improve on in order to get us the, the better result that we're looking for. Uh, just piggybacking off of DVD's question on Campbell, what's been the dialogue with the netminder as he gets ready for today, if any, between you and the staff and yeah, the goal? Yeah, but I, I don't speak... This personally, I don't speak a lot to goaltenders. Uh, just in general, I, I spend other than you know niceties and seeing how people are doing and whatnot. When it comes to the technical side of things, I leave that to Dustin Schwartz, who's kind of in charge of our goalie department. But him and I often uh, talk about the position, uh, talk about what we're looking for as a group, and uh, what to expect from the team that's coming in uh, today. Uh, so that's the type of discussion that happens with Jack and Stewart. Good, thanks guys.